How to create an evil campaign. Welcome to my channel. I focus on tabletop role playing games, video games, and science fiction. If you want to run an evil campaign, I highly suggest you get a copy of The Black Company by Glenn Cook. Let me read a paragraph from a book review of The Black Company. The Black Company by Glenn Cook is a fantasy novel unlike any other. Usually fantasy novels have a clear and definitive sense of what is good and what is evil. In this book, however, these concepts don't really exist. Everyone is evil to various degrees and all that really matters in the long run is which side you happen to be on. It's all relative. That's a good description of The Black Company. It's a great book. I highly recommend it. It gives you a very different viewpoint. I remember I've actually met Glenn Cook at some science fiction conventions. And his description when he started, he wanted to write sort of a other view of Lord of the Rings as told by the orcs. And that's not quite what Black Company is, but it gives you a good idea. You have their low level, they're not very powerful, they're a company that is a mercenary band that is out trying to do whatever they're hired to do. And they run away from things that are more powerful than they are. And it gives you a very different view of fantasy, of dark fantasy, shall we say. The Black Company is an interesting book. You have a character, the limper is truly e evil, and you start to understand why. And it, it's, uh, he's got some interesting characters, and none of them are good. As one character commented, one review I've heard of it comment about the book is, they're all psychopathic murderers, which is true. Almost every one of the characters in the Black Company is a psychopath. They would kill you for your shoes. They would kill you because you looked bad at them. They have no gumption about not offing anyone. And that's what you want in an evil campaign, I think. If you're going to run an evil campaign, take a look at what this offers. Because this gives you a description of how the world is inherently evil. Another interesting source, if you want to take a look at something in the movie, is get a copy of Flesh and Blood from 1985 starring Rutger Hauer. This is a almost fantasy setting. It's uh, medieval. Uh, Rutger Hauer plays a mercenary and it gets really kind of rough. It's a, it's a rough film. There's rape, there's um, death of infants and things like that. Uh, uh, the shows the darker side of combat in there and it's an interesting film uh, that'll give you some ideas about a dark campaign because your characters often would be mercenary types. Let's let's be honest, if that's what most of your characters in D&D, they will do anything for for experience points and or gold, but it's the we run into this good versus evil or whatever. But if you're interested in the evil campaign, these two give you some ideas. I can't find the third reference that I wanted to mention, but David, I think it was David Drake, wrote a set of stories. Now, supposedly, if my memory is correct, that David Drake was a protege of Auguster Duluth, who was a protege of H.P. Lovecraft. And David Drake wrote a couple of very, very dark Lovecraftian novels in the Cthulhu mythos. And there's the one where the team is going, there's a team of a group trying to go out and defeat the uh, 
the incident where some of the really evil things coming for uh, like uh, Cthulhu type monsters are coming into the world and they need to close the gate that they're coming through or whatever and they are all homicidal murderers but they're destroying something much eviler than they are that gives you an idea of how to run an evil campaign you have something that is truly truly evil that is happening to the world and your evil characters have to decide do I want to support that or do I want to stop that and maybe take over the world for myself that's their, their approach is that they go this is an opportunity that uh, I will stab them in the I may work with them and then stab them in the back and take over the world instead so you can work that in there um, that's an interesting approach to running an evil campaign and it can, evil campaigns can get truly nasty. I ran a campaign, and the, the campaign was not geared toward evil, but more adult themes. And I ran the world of Amoras. And the characters all start off really quite, um, they've been, shall we say, traumatized in various ways. And the reason that they're, one of the things that they're trying to do is they're trying to stop the sex slave trade. There's a great lich Kegel who has established behind the scenes the sex slave trade because they become more, and the sex slaves become more and more enamored of the stimulation that the devices that Kegel produces uh, draws them to her so that she uses so instead of the need to go out and find sacrifices she has people lining up to become her the willing sacrifices to fill her phylactery so that she can continue as a lich so those are that that's an evil world that's behind the scenes and the characters can make the decision do I want to be as the, the saying goes, a murder hobo, well, but in the world like that, everybody is evil and to some extent or another. And you can kill an off characters without remorse because they would kill an off you without remorse. So what happens is that you could play evil characters. So starting off an evil campaign, you have to decide what are how evil you want to make your villain. The other option, which I've never done, but is to make a good world where your people are villains trying to destroy that. I take that back. I actually did do a partial implementation of that. It wasn't quite like that. What happened was I did um, uh, the key to Druid's Gate, which was an adventure, and there are some videos on that I've done that I did of this this was an old adventure that I actually ran sort of as a tournament adventure but the world had went too far lawful and the balance needed to be restored it had went too far lawful and the decision was made that they needed to the characters needed to restore the balance because all the evil had been driven from the world except in a small zone which was the uh, inside this massive enclosure that they needed to release the evil because that was the only way to restore balance and you had ex examined I'd examined where the world was good the characters didn't have to be evil they could have been neutral and that was the idea is that it had went too far in one way that you could, that's another option. You could say that the world is too good, too lawful, things are too organized, and you can create a, a campaign around that where the goal is to reestablish the boundaries the, the, so that there's a balance between good and evil and between law and, or, uh, law and chaos. So you can pick, it's got too lawful good and you want to make it much more, you want to reintroduce the chaotic evil into it, or you could just have lawful neutral versus chaotic. 
neutral, but that's more of a chaos. But if it's if it's too good, neutral good, and you want to bring back neutral evil to balance the world, because that's an approach where you can do that. And in that case, then your party is working toward the middle, if you want to do that, so that they are willing to uh, unleash truly evil characters and evil monsters into the world to reestablish a balance in nature. That fit with the concept that druids tend to be neutral and you want to have that as, and a druid would be a good uh, druid type party would be an interesting approach to doing in going back to neut toward neutrality because the the world has got too lawful good and or too, just even too lawful or too good either way it's it, that entire quadrant of the uh, alignment scale I'm that is one approach to taking to make it a reason for your evil campaign is that, that that you're trying to establish neutrality and you can go as wild as you want to go or as wild as your party wants to go I have done terrible things to the party when I was running the world of Amoras the characters they knew what they were getting into when they started because it was a uh, this was an adults only campaign you had I wouldn't let anybody under 18 even try and uh, join the campaign and because we had adult themes and it was uh, what happened to the ca characters I mean it's you know the all the characters in the party were raped men and women and the that was fairly early on in the campaign and you have to decide if that's where you want to go that they um, if you, if you want to run an evil, truly evil campaign, where, you know, that I've heard some people that agree with um, boundaries. I'm not sure. I'm the type of person who thinks that just go for it and let somebody step up and say, oh, I didn't like that. Well, if that's fine. For me, I tend to let people know up front that this is what we're talking about, adult campaign, and we're mainly adults. I prefer to game with adults and people who can handle things like that. I I was in the military for a while, so, you know, I have a vocabulary. I don't use that in my videos, and I try not to use that except when it's appropriate. And when you're running adult campaigns, that can there are times when that's appropriate. So if you want to run an evil campaign, decide what is evil. And that's, and do you want to as the game master or DM, do you want to be more evil than your players, or do you want to be less evil? That's sort of one of the hard questions you have to decide. Do you want the players just wandering around killing everything? Well, they you don't need to. I mean, come on. Well, most people who've gamed, you've seen people who come in and, and that I told stories about the a party it's uh, one about uh, killing a dragon and the party wasn't happy with what the what the town gave them as reward so they managed to slaughter the entire town and so they could take everything that was there but you could make a decision you know and that's just being mercenary type things and that fits with the concept of the, of the movie flesh and blood uh, that i recommended and you can take a look at that if they're just they want their just rewards and they will do anything to get them do they rob the banks if you want to see a more modern questionable one it's sort of humorous if you take a look at Kelly's heroes which is an interesting question where the the guys have decided they've heard about a load of gold inside it's World War II and they hear it's the German gold and they have this idea that they're going to go in and rob this bank before the rest of it. it it's it's not a not a great film but it has some interesting scenes and some chuckles that at least I thought was interesting but it gives you an idea that your characters suddenly turn into mercenaries. They want to do things for gold. If that's what you want to do, that's that's an easy way to play a relatively evil character, a relatively evil game, because then they're playing the brigands, they're playing the pirates, 
they want to rob and steal and get the money and then they want to come to town and party and party hardy and so on and if you've watched black sales that's a great example of the of some things like that where you play the characters that are like that and you can create it and you can run an evil campaign fairly easily based upon piracy and being a brigand because then they're they're doing that the question comes up is what do you um, how what do you what kind of campaign do you want to run you can run it in any setting you want you can uh, uh, you can do anything from science fiction to pirates in the uh, on, on the seven seas and whatever but it's a uh, running an evil campaign can be a lot of fun though it is not for the faint at heart because it's uh, your characters are tend to be evil that's why the black company which is very well written I think and it describes the characters how they would slit your throat in a heartbeat for uh, the gold in your pocket but they there is a loyalty between them and that's an interesting question is how loyal are the par uh, are your characters in the party going to be now I've done the one this is the other question if you're going to run an evil campaign do you want to have the party really know each other that well what do I mean by that I've run adventures and actually one not that long ago where one of the characters wanted to play an assassin and it was totally planning to do player versus player so in those type of games the more interesting question is is that you don't have the player say oh I'm a first level assassin no you introduce each other by role playing and you describe your character not what level you are unless you want it's up to them to describe what they what race they are whatever and that means that the party doesn't know exactly what class the other player characters are and it's great for being player versus player for those of you who want to discourage that okay have everything out in the open but you can also go with evil where that's it because then with evil characters or an evil campaign you may find you know your character comes along and opens a chest and pockets all the treasure and does says uh tells the party oh there was it was just an empty chest or pockets half the treasure instead of saying there were 300 gold there there was 150 or only 100 gold there to be divided and he walks he or she walks away with the other part this can get this can be a lot of fun and you can get into lots of note taking and what happens is when I have done this type of campaign where everybody is for themselves if, sitting around a table I've had stacks of notes coming into me characters are writing notes and handing them to to me and I've got to go through and I have to keep order of what order the the mess the the messages come in the, the little notes come in so I know what's going on and I'm writing notes back to characters and so on and it can be interesting with well, today that almost lends itself more to an online play where you can send messages to each character independently and nobody knows that that's actually happening and that adds an interesting shall we say fog of war environment to that so I'd almost recommend if you're going to do an evil campaign you may want to consider doing that online simply because it allows your characters to first off exchange messages that the DM doesn't see and second for the DM to exchange messages with each character and they may not see what's going on or even know that the messages are being passed so that you can do fun things like that and therefore it gets really interesting and it can be a lot of fun I've had a lot of fun with it and I encourage you to try I'd like to hear what have you done with evil campaigns tell me about the evil campaigns you've run how evil did you get how or how good did you did you do the other one where you created a, a world that is too good that your characters want to rebel against and that because the world is too good that's an interesting one. I haven't, like I said, I've created one where the, the idea was to get you to balance 
and that one I'm not really that pleased with it. It worked well, but it, it's not one of the greatest of adventures that I've had. But there are videos of the the people playing that. I think we did like 11 hours of online gaming that are there. So tell me about your about your stories. I'd love to hear your comments. Thank you for watching my video. I look forward to learning what you think about this video. Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate all your comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. I appreciate both forms of feedback. If you're new here and would like to subscribe, you can click on the icon on the left. If you're interested, there's more content on the right.